Hi, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, your host. Each week, I interview a business owner or author, and we chat about all things business or how they became authors. These women share their stories with me each week, and it is my hope that you will be encouraged by these stories so much that you will rise up and live strongly in your own story. I also rely on you, the listener, to share this podcast with others. And you can do that by sharing my post from Facebook or reposting on Instagram and Twitter. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, you should head over there today and catch some of my Instagram stories. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little obsessed with Instagram story and doing those, so head over there and you can find me at Kareen Sandifer. Today on the show is a lady that I have been following for several years now. She began her blog in 2008. That makes her one of the pioneers in the blog world. Her blog, Faithful Provision, is about saving money, family, and so much more. I found her because she was the go-to person on couponing. So when I was obsessed with couponing, I went to her blog and found out all the information, and she also had some great recipes. So I stayed, and I love her blog. She has written for magazines such as Home Life, All You, Family Circle, and Women's Day. She's also been a contributor on DaveRamsey.com. Kelly Hancock and I chat about how to start a blog and how to own your own content. So here's my conversation with Kelly. Um, a blogger and you've written a book mm-hmm. and you run this like empire <laughs> of <laughs> provisions which is an awesome site if people need to go see that it's a it's a money saving well how would you describe it well um it's kind of morphed over the years but it used to be coupon matchups and things but more it's kind of now a lifestyle of saving and um just kind of giving back and um it's a little compilation of all the different things I do and like so yeah kind of a lifestyle blog now but I think that's you know and and it's funny because I started blogging around the same time that you did and I remember people were like you've got to be really narrow and focused and I was like but mm-hmm. but I like this and I like that and I wish that I hadn't listened to them because now we do we have like it's there are lifestyle blogs so a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I notice you have a little bit of health. You have the um, finance, the mm-hmm. money saving, and you have food. recipes. Oh. <laughs> food. <laughs> now you've had you've had food recipes and stuff when you started it. In mm-hmm. when did you start the block? Was it twenty ten? Started in two thousand eight. Oh, okay, so mm-hmm. I caught up mm-hmm. with you. I think around twenty ten. Mm-hmm. I found you, and um, you had already you already had your blog going and. Um, I was into coupon matchups mm-hmm. and you were telling us where to go and what to do. And, um, and it's changed so much. <laughs> oh, it has. Now, how, how, how has it changed? Like what's, was it like, what was important then is not important now or what? Well, I think, um, a couple things. Number one, I think the couponing, what everybody realized is although we saved a lot of money, you ended up spending more on things you didn't really need. Mm-hmm. And so you, and, and not only things you didn't need, but things that weren't really all that healthy. What, what we found was, yeah, I could, I could grocery shop for 30 to $50 a week for my family of four, but we weren't eating very healthy. I mean, when I went back and looked, there weren't a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. Everything was boxed and pre-made and prepared. And, um, as we started to pull away from that, the coupon need kind of went down and uh, just started buying more fresh fruits and vegetables. And, and we, as a family, started eating differently. So I didn't want to post about what we weren't doing. You know what I mean? So right. it was more of kind of what my interests were. And I wasn't in that, in, you know, the the couponing. We I still use coupons, but not like we did before. Mm-hmm. And did your did you feel like you lost people or did they kind of follow you into that? Some of them did. Some of them followed me into it. I even led people, you know, people who are hardcore couponers that still wanted to, to stay in that lifestyle. I, I led them to other people that were doing it really well because mm-hmm. um, that just wasn't. And, and I also got to a point over the years where um, my husband had been working with me for a while and then I had some staff that was with me. And then over the years, we've just kind of the business has changed. And so I'm back to a one person show and um, I just don't have the bandwidth. I have three kids and um, homeschool 
you know, 24 hours a day. So yes. it just, I didn't have, I couldn't work 50, 60 hours a week like I was before. Mm-hmm. Um, now that they're, we're homeschooling or have 50 to 60 hours of work um, to be done, couldn't do that. So it's changed. It's more, uh, you know, just kind of the best deals, the best things I like, you know, my favorite recipes, little tips here and there, mm-hmm. um, and more of a, of a lifestyle type of. Yeah. Did posting. you, um, do you miss couponing? Cause it no. kind of was a sport <laughs> a little bit, wasn't it? It really was. It was a sport. I mean, it really was. It was like, who can save the most? No, I don't because, um, it really sucked up a lot of my time. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it when I was doing it, but it was, it was great. We saved a ton of money, but we weren't eating real healthy. And now that I go back and look at it, a lot of the time I spent couponing, I, I should have been spending with my babies. Mm-hmm. Um, cause they were little at the time and, mm-hmm. um, I probably could have spent a lot of that time doing food prep and different things that could have made my money go further instead of always, cause I was at the store a lot when I was mm-hmm. in the thick of it. It was, it was, it looked almost like obsession. I look back at it now. I was like, Ooh, that was my husband would be like, you're going back to the store again today. I was like, yes, <laughs> guess what? They've got this on sale. And I yeah. was like, and there was a point I was like, okay, this is mm-hmm. enough. So. Yeah. You know, I, um, I love saving money, but I did come to that realization as well that we were eating, you know, that the things that I was getting, but it really, some of it I had to, I ended up donating to the food bank or whatever, because they weren't things that my family would eat. Mm -hmm. And so, Mm -hmm. or needed to eat, (laughs) or needed to eat. Right. So I kind of came to that realization as well. And it just kind of died down and I've seen people pick it up and, I'm like, oh, it's kind of a cycle and you, um, now I still have coupons that I carry around with me. Sometimes I don't Mm -hmm. remember them, but they're, um, you know, I make sure one of the things I learned from you probably is that, you know, don't buy something you don't need or want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make sure. And I needed to follow my own rules. There were a lot of days where I was buying things I didn't need Mm -hmm. just because they were free or on sale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So so now tell me more about your blog. So, and you've written a book. Mm-hmm. A couple um, of years ago, actually. Yeah. Um, wow. Saving Savvy. And it was about saving money. Um, it's funny. People pick it up when I go to shows and they're like, oh, is it all about couponing? And I'm like, nope, just one chapter on couponing. <laughs> yeah. The rest of it's just, you know, lifestyle of how to save. And, you know, a lot of it's in the food area and um, how to prepare foods, how to freeze foods, stocking up, how to, how to get things when they're on sale. So it's more applicable to any, you know, point in time, not mm-hmm. just with the coup when the couponing was big. Yeah. I remember, um, there was another family or there was a family called the Economides. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. liked their, the way that they did things because they really didn't, they used coupons, but they mostly, like you were saying, they bought sale, you know, when things were on sale, they kind of stocked up mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that they, you know, the ground beef would last for longer, you know, longer. Mm-hmm. They knew what they, into knowing, knowing what sale, what is the sale? Yeah. What are good Yeah. Prices. That was a big one. That was yes. a big thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and most I, people don't have a clue what's a good deal. Mm-hmm. I don't know anymore. I just, yeah, I, it changes. You, yeah. And, you know, sometimes you just, there are seasons and you have the time and sometimes you don't have the time mm-hmm. to do things. And then you just, uh, um, you do what you can, do what you can, you know, go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm just like, well, I'll, I'll get this. I've got to buy this. And sometimes I'll do the Amazon, whatever. Now come to my oh, door. That, now. And that is bring wonderful. Me, <laughs> bring me this now because uh, it's worth $5 for me to get you to come because mm-hmm. that's run to the grocery store. So, but, um, so tell me what, what are your, some of your, um, hobbies now? Are you still enjoying cooking and? Mm -hmm. um, Yes. I love to cook and my daughter's 11 now and she is, she's kind of, I've kind of worked myself out of a job teaching her to cook. That's Um, great. Like even we just had Thanksgiving dinner last week and I mean, she pretty much did it all. She decorated the table and she prepped the turkey and she made the dressing and she made the sweet potato. I mean, she did it all. I mean, I helped her some and did the planning, but as far as the actual prep work, um, but I like being in the kitchen with her. That's really fun. And uh, my son's starting to cook. He was helping me last night, which was really neat. But um, that's a big thing I like to do. I like, um, 
we homeschool, like I said, so we are out a lot. The kids, we do a lot of play dates with friends. So our, I mean, my favorite thing is just fellowshipping with friends. We mm-hmm. love going in the afternoon and hanging with our friends. Uh, we have some friends who live on uh, some farmland and in the woods. And so we go hang with them and, um, you know, that's, that's been the fun for us these days. Yeah, that is nice. And so with your, um, with your blog now, tell me how often do you blog Mm -hmm. and do you have like a quota? Like I've, I've got to get three blogs out this month or I have Mm -hmm. to do one, one a week or two a week. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I'll give you an idea of how it's changed. When I was in the thick of it back in like 08 to probably 2012, we were doing, some days we'd have 20 blog posts that would go up a day. Now, the nature of my blog is so different though than most others. With it being a deal blog um, at the time, it was, you know, every post was about a great deal that day. And that's how we made our money. Um, Over the years, that has changed. And uh, when I had staff, uh, we would do probably four or five posts a day. We got down to that. And now that it's just me, um, it's slowly migrated down. So I really tailor my content a little more to what's most important to me. Cause as I was saying, I've got, you know, three kids and one of them's a toddler, two year old, he keeps me pretty busy. Mm-hmm. And so I just don't have the bandwidth, uh, like I did before. And so I'm probably doing no more than four posts a month at this point. So I oh, do okay. about one a week one now. A week, yeah. yeah. So a lot less, I do more on social media and kind of chat with people there. And, um, <clears throat> I've started doing a little bit of, uh, blog kind of coaching and mentoring. I've got some, uh, did a event last month with Dave Ramsey, uh, for their business boutique. And so that kind of has, uh, with the last two years that has kind of opened up some avenues where, uh, I can do some one-on-one coaching, which is what I love. I don't do a lot of it, but do just a little bit of it uh, with my free time. Cause I love the blogging, but I like the fellowship a little more, the mm-hmm. face-to-face. Yes. Um, and the talking, I'm a, I'm a texter, but I'm usually the one my friends know will pick up the phone and call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, that's great that you're kind of giving back and, and helping others. I'm surprised that people are still, because I guess when, when the blogging world started, I was like, you know, I, I was into saving money and all this stuff. And, but I thought, well, Kelly's got that. She's got that niche on the market. Who knew that 20 million other mm-hmm. blogs, mm-hmm. money saving blogs would be going up. Like I just well, and, thought, and, yeah. And did so well. Well, and the thing is too, though, you know, it's changed so much. I've been blogging for what, almost like nine years now. And, um, it has just changed dramatically and that's why we changed and we found that, you know, it just, it's not the same business model as it was 10 years ago. Not, I mean, it doesn't even look remotely the same, like, you know, events and, um, different things like that, that I used to do. I used to do couponing classes and workshops and, you know, that was huge then. And now you don't see it as much, but uh, our model, even from where our, uh, our financial model used to be all affiliate and, and lots of money, you know, a lot of our revenue came from, um, the events, not so much now. I mean, I'll do, I don't do many events now. I only do a couple a year at this point. Um, and I don't do my own events like I used to do. I usually just kind of wherever I'm asked to go, I'll go there and I'll pick a couple a year and I'll go. And so revenue comes from that. But then also now it's more, um, not as much affiliate, as it used to be. That's why we did so many posts. So our revenue model has changed a lot um, because it's not as much a deal blog as more of a lifestyle blog. So it's more, we get paid on um, uh, page views and a lot of that comes from social media. So social media has, you know, and um, has has kind of brought that about. So Pinterest and Mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram and all mushroomed. I mean, just, yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, Nine years ago, you didn't have the, I mean, I think that we had Facebook, but there weren't any Facebook ads that, mm-mm, mm-mm. that we could partake into, like, you know, and. Well, and the social media outlets have changed so much. Like there's some I've learned, you know, at first I would try to just every single new social media outlet that would come out, Vine, Periscope, Snapchat, I would start to try. And I was like, you know, I learned that I just need to pick the ones that I enjoy mm-hmm. and, and stick with those. Um, because the amount of hours I was able to put in a week, I couldn't, you know, I had to pick my battles. I didn't have unlimited time to learn them all and figure them out. So, um, you know, I forgo 
I started Vine and then the rest of them like Periscope, Snapchat. I, I kind of was like, you know what? Those aren't my forte. I, uh, I'm i going to stick with Facebook and Instagram and I love Pinterest. And, and those are where my traffic drivers are now. So, yeah, yeah. I love Pinterest. It's, oh, yeah. I think I, I like Pinterest when for recipes and things like that. So I can see where you would put some, some mm -hmm. stuff on there because I do love all of your recipes. I specifically like the one that was the, uh, lime chicken. Oh yes. The Jamaican coconut. jerk lime chicken. <laughs> that was delicious. I that still remember that. Yeah, I haven't made it in a long time cause I was looking at your blog and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember that. That mm -hmm. was so good. So you, do you still come up with rest fun recipes like that? And I do some, not as much as I used to. And, and our eating has changed. So, um, I do some, but there it's more, uh, like that was a more healthy one, but it's, it's trying to get a little more to, we, we try to do a little gluten and dairy free if we can. I mean, we're not strict about it, but, um, we noticed our health has gotten a little better when we've, we've pulled back a little bit on that. So, um, right, right. So that's been, and I try to keep the blog true to who I am and not just, you know, what makes money that, mm -hmm. that has been, I think a hard thing over the years is watching that. Oh, well, if I don't do that anymore, the revenue is going to go down, but that's not where really where my interest lies. Right. So it's, so changed. it's determining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's where changed to focus. where you, where your focus is now. Well, now you've mm -hmm. got, um, you know, your kids and your homeschooling and, you know, I, uh, I can't believe I asked you what your hobby was because <laughs> your hobby's probably homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is. And I love it. You know, yeah. it's, and, and I do, you know, it, it's something that I, I would, I would not change it for the world. I love it. And so that, that was one of the reasons that pulled back on blogging some, cause it's just, it's so fun to, yeah. you know, watch those little light bulbs go on and I love to read. So that's, we do a lot of reading for school. So it's a great, um, it's a great way for me to get my reading in. We yeah. sit around like yesterday, it was rainy and gross all day. And we sat on the couch and the kids illustrated and, and I read for a few hours and it was just, wonderful um, <laughs> you know yeah. in the days when it's beautiful we go sit outside and or we go do hikes and then come back and illustrate and do things like that while we read so that's great um, I yeah. love that you you know with homeschooling that you're able to structure your day the way you want it and mm -hmm. you know and and because we have all the wonderful seasons that you can you know go outside and get fresh air mm -hmm. all that is very important and you don't have that when you when the kids are in school so um, that's a big that flexibility is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, cause with my children, especially it just, they need it. They need the outdoor. I've got, uh, my middle is a, is a boy and he just, he thrives when he, when he's antsy, I'm like, go jump on the trampoline. And 10 minutes later comes back in and we can focus on math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember my little boy just, he would walk and read because mm -hmm. he just couldn't mm -hmm. sit still and mm -hmm. he just needed that, that energy get that energy out. So yeah, I totally they do. That. Yeah. So if there was someone out there wanting to start a blog, what advice would you give them? And, you know, how would you advise them to start? Get What's started. the first thing to do? You know, the first thing I usually tell people, I think there's always this, um, there are always this myth that people think blogging is so easy. Oh, I can just sit in my PJs and you know what? Blogging is going to be simple. I'm just going to blog and get it started. And, and I've talked to a lot of people who thought, Oh, I can do this. But I, one of the biggest things I tell people is it's just like any other business you start. I mean, you need to have a business plan. You need to have a budget. You need to put in the hours. You need to be consistent. You know, you're not, most bloggers do not see instant revenue. You know, it takes sometimes a year before they see very much revenue, You know, maybe six months, depending on what they're doing. But um, just, I think that was the biggest thing I tell people, make sure that you understand what you're getting into. You know, it's not a, it's not a quick hit and it's not a, um, you know, just put a couple hours in a week and you're done. Like, it's like any business. Um, the other thing I tell people too with blogging that I think is so important, and I actually did a, the, the class that I did at the Dave Ramsey Business Boutique was a blogging toolbox. It was about how to get started and, and the, the pitfalls people hit and, I think a big one I saw a lot of people hit, and I don't see as much of it now, but was uh, doing a free website, like having it hosted with WordPress.com or um, not owning the site. And that's one of the biggest things I tell people, spend a little more on hosting and actually own your content because there's so much you can't do if you don't own it. You can't monetize it. You can't 
you don't own your content if it's, yeah. if you're not paying for your hosting. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and it's not as hard as people think. And, and, and a big thing too, is not to, I think people have this desire with blogging to feel like it has to be perfect before they launch. And right. when we launched, I didn't even have a logo. I mean, we just started and I started blogging. I didn't know what in the world I was doing. And I kind of just learned as I went, but I'm glad now that I didn't spend a bunch of money on a logo and having a $10,000 website that we just, you know, the WordPress platforms free. You just have to pay for hosting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just finding the one you like. And, and I tell people, you know, get started and make a little money first. See if you're going to stick with it. And then, you know, maybe pay for somebody to make you a logo or, you know, these days you can make your own logo when you use things like Canva. You don't, yeah, you know, especially I mean, if you're starting out. If we had Canva back then, gosh, mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it's so easy now. So but back so then simple. it was like. Your think, own graphics. I mean, they make yeah. literally five minutes. You can create one. Mm-hmm. So, 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 and it looked, they look so professional and so nice. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how things have changed. So what is the best business advice someone's given you? You know, we um, had a friend who told me something that was so poignant for me. We hit a point where, uh, it was probably about five years ago, where we were given the opportunity to do a lot more speaking. And I was going to be on the road, potentially, and, you know, looking at doing another book and doing all these different things. And he said, where is your sweet spot in your business? And um, that was huge for me. I've thought about that every day when I start to do a new venture or branch out and do something new with the business or not do something. I think of where my sweet spot is. And and what he meant by that was, what is the point in your business where you enjoy it or where it becomes something that you didn't desire it to be? So for us, the sweet spot for me was always, you know, I had employees for a while and they were amazing, but I didn't realize the work it took to manage employees and, and, um, you know, we only had two or three, but that's still, you know, making sure they have something to do every day, payroll, making sure, you know, they get trained, all those different things. And I realized that for me, that was not my sweet spot. My sweet spot was being able to blog as I wanted Mm -hmm. and when I wanted. And so I've kind of pulled back into my sweet spot. So for me, the sweet, the, the, the love of the business wasn't, not that I didn't want it to grow, but it wasn't being on tour and speaking on 60 dates and having a book. That wasn't, that wasn't what I wanted. And I think right. that's for a lot of people is you got to figure out what is it, what's your end goal? Why are you doing this? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and for me, it was just to be able to have a creative outlet. Um, um, you know, I love, love, love being with my children, but having something that I could do to give back um, relationally with, with my peers and, um, and be able to have that outlet, but also bring in a little revenue for me. It was nice to be able to, you know, add a little bit. So we had extra income for vacations or, you know, uh, you know, if we wanted to go shopping one day, things like that. And know that, that, um, there was a little extra there. It, it's also helped during the lean times. My husband lost his job, um, a couple of times in the last 10 years, and it has been great to have it to fall back on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that, that's a big thing I think is just figuring out, what it is that you really want. You know, a lot of people say, I want all these followers. Well, with all these followers on Facebook and Instagram comes a lot of responsibility because you got to interact with them to keep them and to really do what you want to do well. And sometimes that can be more work than the blog itself. Right. You end up, yeah, like you were saying, you know, your sweet spot wasn't, you know, managing employees. It was Mm -hmm. the writing and the being Mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. And so coming back to the roots of it all and, and doing what you love, I mean, it sounds mm-hmm. like you're in your sweet spot now because you've yeah. got your, your kids. Well, and getting to encourage others like this, like I love, um, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't do a lot of speaking, not because I don't love it, but because I just don't have the bandwidth with three kids because that's where, that's my first love. That's where mm-hmm. I love to be. And when I have a little extra time to do something else, I do love being face to face. I love encouraging and coaching. And that is just, it's so fun to me. Um, but the, the management of it, that was not, that was not my, that's not what number you, one job what you signed up for. <laughs> you didn't, you probably didn't think of like, Oh no, now I've got to deal with these people and, you know, mm-hmm. great as they were, 
but you yep. still have to, you know, they're still employees and you have to manage them. And, mm-hmm. and, and even as, I mean, they were, we never had any problems. I had some of the best people working with me. Um, but it's still, you just gotta, you know, it's yeah. other people you've got to deal with and, and be on other schedules and things like that. And it just, it was a challenge with, with little kids and homeschooling and being a wife and a mom and managing mm-hmm. a household. And so and the wonderful thing, you know, what I tell some of my clients is that we have seasons in our life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just because you are, you know, I'm in a season where I still have one at home. And, and so I choose to not work after a certain time because I want to mm-hmm. pick them up from school. I want to be able to, you know, um, cook a meal if, you know, if I can. And, and so there are, you know, give and takes, you know, sometimes I work at night, but sometimes I don't. And, you know, whatever it takes to have that, you know, um, keep that goal in that, uh, what's important in mind mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Instead of just, you know, going for it. And then you're like, Oh no, I didn't know I was going to have to go on a book tour, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like my family. I don't think people yeah. realize, you know, what they're signing up for. And it's, it's, uh, and it's helpful to know, like, this might not be the right season. So, right. Well, and I think too, you know, I think there's such a, False message, especially for women, of you can have it all. You mm. can do it all. And right. I just don't believe that's true. You have to pick. Um, mm-hmm. You've got to pick where you really want to be. And you can't You can't work 60 hours a week and be a mom full time. And, I mean, it's hard, you know. And so you kind of got to pick. If you have the option to pick. And some people don't. That's just where they are. But for us, it was, you know just to make extra money that we didn't have to have to live. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, you know, it'd be great to have a bigger home and go on more vacations, but, um, you know, that's just going to be more time away from them and, and we don't really need it. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, um, my son is, is in school and it's a, a rigorous school and he's an athlete. And I think they told him, you know, freshman year, they told us you either, you can't have it all. You're either, mm-hmm. You choose sleep, friends, or grades. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which yeah. is like, oh gosh, <laughs> which Ooh. one do you pick? And so I, I agree. I mean, of course, he he's managing to do it all, but but you know, somewhat. But you know, there's always something that's going to suffer, especially with with moms, and you know, there's mm-hmm. always something you can, you can give the illusion that you're doing it all, and you're doing it all, mm-hmm. but you're not doing it all well. I mean, there's well, and that's, that's where I was like a few years ago. I, I was doing it all, but, uh, what happened was it all caught up with me. I was burning the candle at both ends. You know, I was up at five in the morning, staying up till midnight, working, homeschooling the kids during the day. My husband was working full time. And, you know, after a few years of that, I mean, my body took a toll. I, you know, started having health issues and, you know, stress and, and, um, it was sick all the time and I pulled back and miraculously my health came back in order and you know, it just, wow. You know, relationships came back in order. Cause when you're not healthy physically, you're not really healthy emotionally. And it just, um, it really is amazing mm-hmm. the difference. So you can do it all maybe for a short amount of time, but it'll it, catch up to you. Yeah. yeah. It'll catch up. And luckily, you know, you're, you were able to see what, what was important to you and what, and going back to mm-hmm. that sweet spot, that's such great advice. Well, and I think that's just, I think that's such a big thing is for people to realize what, why are they doing this <clears throat> and what is the reason, you know, cause some people it isn't for an income. It is a creative outlet. And if it, especially so if that's it, um, having those goals in mind mm-hmm. and that plumb line of what, where do I want it to be? if it gets above this level, it's really not what it was supposed to do. This was not the goal. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. True, true. Well, so now I want to talk a little bit about, uh, before I forget, before we leave the business aspect of it all, tell me what is your favorite app? Oh, goodness. Let's see. Is it bad if I say Amazon? It's not a business oh, app. It's a buying Amazon. app. Is that terrible? No. I, I mean, I, I love my Amazon app. Okay. I, secret. I, I haven't gone anywhere for Christmas. I, I ordered every bit of Christmas online. That's good. Everything wow. down to paint brushes, socks, 
<laughs> stocking wow. stuffers. I didn't go to Walmart. Awesome. I didn't go to Target. I didn't. I didn't go anywhere. I did it all online. I was like, I just. I've got three kids, and yeah, best price. I don't have to go around anywhere. So Amazon. Amazon's my app. For I that. agree <laughs> with that. Just the just. We were out of town this weekend, and uh, I have gotten to where I I might see something. This is terrible because I'll see something in a store, Walmart mm-hmm. or Target, or even if we're in just some specialty shop out of town. And um, I, I was in a camping store, and I was like, that's a really cool camping light. And I, But I don't need it. I don't need it, but I, post, I put it in my Amazon, like, search bar on my on my app. And lo and behold, it was like, you know, $10 cheaper. Mm-hmm. And like, I, yep. I put it on my wish list, and, you know, it's there. Oh, and that's it. exactly. Well, and I found that, like, a friend of mine, we were talking about Christmas shopping even. I said, I have my list of what I need. But what happens is when I go to the mall, oh my goodness, what I need triples because it's on sale. Right. And it's not really anything I need or really even want, but I'm like, wow, that's a good deal. I need to get it. Or my kids need to have it. Mm -hmm. And I've had this well thought out list. So shopping online has saved me money just from the sheer fact of I'm not in the store buying things I don't need. (coughs) Right. I just, I just finished um, paying our yearly you know, Amazon Prime mm-hmm. thing. And my husband's like, what is this charge? What did you buy on Amazon? No, I didn't buy it's anything. Worth it's worth it. Membership. <laughs> and let me just tell you. Membership so, has its benefits. I know. And he's all about, you know, how it's going to save me money. What's his return on investments? Like, here's your return on investment. Mm-hmm. I am not going to Target every two minutes and, you know, yep. buying stuff. And it's great. I love and it. And the Amazon Now app. Woo! That has been. I don't have that yet. Should I download that one? Oh, yes. I ordered something one day. The kids and I were home and I needed like cough syrup or something because somebody or elderberry syrup or something. And so I ordered it. They happened to have it. And while I was on there, I was like, oh, and I have a few grocery things I need too. And I ordered like apples and a couple other things. (laughs) I am not kidding. They were at my house within like an hour. Had dropped it off at my front door, and I was like, "Well, I love that. this can be really addictive." <laughs> um, I love so, that. So yeah, and don't they have like milk and everything? Really, like oh, they have there's... everything. Like you could do that instead of the grocery. I might mm-hmm. have to do that because I forgot about eggs mm-hmm. yesterday on my mm-hmm. grocery. Oh, and the and oh, where we're located, the the warehouse is pretty close, so they get here. Oh, you're kidding! Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. So that's why they were there in an hour. That's yeah. great. Because I was like, what? That was weird. <laughs> we that showed is up great. With a paper bag full of groceries. Oh, love mm-hmm. it. So worth it. Because you don't have to get out of your, you don't have to drive. And that's oh, time. When you have and, children. When you have yeah. children. Oh, yeah. That does save you a lot of time and money. Mm-hmm. So speaking of the area we're in, we're in Nashville. What is your favorite Nashville restaurant? Okay. My favorite restaurant, just because this is where me and my girlfriends go all the time. Is Sopapillas. It's in Brentwood. It's a Mexican yeah. restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably my favorite. What do you get there? Um, I, I've been there a few times, but I never know what to order. The Baja Fish Tacos. Baja Fish Tacos. Mm-hmm. I think it's because it is a New Mexico style. Mm-hmm. It's different. Food. So it's a little bit different. Yeah. A little healthier. Oh, is it? Um, okay. Do they yeah, have... it's a little healthier. It's it's more, uh, well, not all of it. <laughs> yeah. I guess the, the grilled have fish cheese. tacos are good, but yeah. yeah, it's it's really good. Okay. I'll have to try those. So puppy is, yeah, that is a great restaurant. What um what are you reading these days? Well, let's see. Um, I love old classics and finished, uh, I love Jean Stratton Porter and Keeper of the Bees was when I finished and then I started reading her one, Freckles. So it's not... Um, Probably not the riveting stuff that most people are reading these days, but I love it. It's it's kind of very idealistic uh, type of reading and picturesque, and um, so that that's my fiction. And then my nonfiction, um, I listen to lots of podcasts and uh, focus on family. I love to listen to, and there was one on there a few weeks ago, um, and so I bought the book and have loved it. It's I have a daughter and two sons, and it's called uh, Mother Mothers and Sons. I think it's Mother and Son: The Respect Effect. And it's uh, just about using the word respect and how men, especially in boys these days, need to hear it more. It's, it's kind of the love languages and how, you know, men and women, women need love, men need respect. And just the reminder of you were raising a man. Right. 
-hmm. and men need respect. So learning how to change that vocabulary, which is really awkward using those words with your eight year old son who's been Mm -hmm. disobeying. So it's Mm. been really neat learning and, 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 but watching the fruit of that has been unbelievable. Um, even this morning, disciplining my son where he was dead wrong on something and been ignoring me, but using those words and just watching his little shoulders perk up and, and he like takes ownership of it. It's been really neat. Something I didn't know I was lacking in my parenting. I'm sure there's lots, but that was a huge light bulb. So that sounds like something I need to read. I mean, listen to it. So it's a podcast from Focus on the They've family. got a podcast on Focus on the Family. There's two of them. And the guy's name is Egrich, I think, something Egrich. I'll have but to get the link and mm-hmm. post yeah, it I'll send it to notes. you. It's been really good. It's um, I'm about halfway through it, but it's been great. That is good. Yeah, that sounds really good. It's so needed because mm-hmm. boys. It's just a different ball game. It is. Ball game. And, you know, girls are sweet and, you know, they go through their times and you have to, but because we're mom, you know, we're women, so we kind of are in tune. You can understand but, that a little more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Yeah. Just like, it was funny. Just the, the boys don't need to hear, I love you all. I mean, they need to hear it, but that's not what they need to hear so much from their moms. It's more of, they need to hear that they're respected and that they're honored and that they're honorable and. Uh, you know, just, it was really, you know, that you're raising a man, you're not raising a boy, you're raising a man and men need, that was like the first sentence in it. And I was like, oh, wow. I never thought about it that way. So very good stuff. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to that. So, um, what are some three things I always ask my guests what three things they're absolutely loving right now. Okay. It's fall here. So I love tea. So I like rooibos tea. That's all day long. I'm drinking tea. Me and my kids love tea. What kind is, is it just? I do the, it's rooibos, R-O-O-I-B-O-S. It's a vanilla rooibos. Numi is the brand and it's uh, just tea bags and we drink that all day long. It's so wonderful and it's very good for you. Auto, yeah, uh, immune fighting (laughs) things. So, um, let's see, what else do we love? Uh, what am I loving? Oh, just food in general, but (laughs) I'm a cheese quesadilla lover. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to do. It is. And so that's like our lunch, our staple every day. Mm-hmm. Um, doing that every day. What else am I loving right now? Um, I'm loving downtime with my kids. Just um, lots of reading and snuggling up on the couch. And the holiday. it's the holidays right now. So just doing all that by the fire and in front of the tree. Mm, very nice. Yeah. So That's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Kelly. This has been so much fun. I I love your blog. I'm going to keep reading it. And Thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Oh, man, don't I wish I could have listened to this podcast when I started my blog years ago. Kelly had some great information, and I loved getting to know her. I have heard that some of you are listening to this podcast while you are getting ready in the morning, or some of you are listening while you're driving into work. So please don't ever worry about jotting any information down from these podcasts because I have everything we talked about and how to connect with Kelly and the guest, including the links from the show at kareensanderford.com under Rising Stories Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Take care and keep rising in your own story.